Hi guys, welcome back to the Nevermind Poly podcast. My name is Matt, I'm your host, and we chat to rock and metal bands from around the world. And it is my absolute pleasure to bring you this conversation. I've got Adam of the band Sleep Outside returning to the show. How are you doing, sir? How's things? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me back. It's been a while. It's been a long time. You know what? It's been two years. So this podcast will go out in November, and you came on at the very end of November 2021, which is... Is this 2021? Yeah, it would be two years. Yeah, fucking madness. In fact... That is frightening. I actually, uh, so I've got an infographic that I've been making. So basically the plan with the podcast this year, it wasn't, it was sort of started at the start of the year and it's now becoming a bit of reality. It was to try and do a hundred guest episodes for the year, right? And I looked back at the one, like previous one from 2021 to 2022 and you were number 23. So <laughs> you were the 23rd person I'd interviewed on the show and now we you will be... I think the like 86th of this year. So it's been, yeah, yeah, it's been a mad fucking ride. How's, how's things been in the last couple of years? That's, how's it all been? Yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, first of all, it's, it's sick that you're, you're growing. I've been keeping an eye, you know, I've been listening to the podcast ever since. And, oh, amazing. Uh, Thank you, mate. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impressive. You're, uh, you're hustling, but uh, yeah, everything's going well. I mean, um, pretty busy at the moment. Uh, all systems go and, and getting ready to release some new music and, and kind of getting back into the swing of things Absolutely. after, uh, after a little while. Absolutely, um, and that's the thing. So the last time you we, you and I were on the podcast and stuff, uh, the EP uh, "This Won't Last Forever" came out and it was being released and things. How's um how's things now that that's kind of had its time to sort of settle? How's how's all that kind of gone? How did that go for you guys? I mean, truthfully, it went better than we ever expected it to. Um, mm, good. <laughs> we, we we managed to tour a lot. We managed to to play as many shows as as we wanted to. Um, I mean, we we'd always want to play more. Like we we'll play every day if we could. But yeah, it, I mean, it, it went a lot better than we expected. Had a really good response. Um, and it's it's a shame it's taken us so long to to get to this next EP really. But it's been it's been a lot a lot going on behind the scenes. I mean, we we went to Canada. We played our first international shows. We've done all sorts. So yeah, it's been yeah. it's been it's been a ride. Absolutely, absolutely. And so this is going to be some quite nice, um, syn- is it synergy the right word? It's going to be quite a nice little flow through, right? Because, again, the world of podcasting right now is fucking mad. And I've got you, which is coming out in November, but we're having this chat now. And I'm actually chatting to King Nun tomorrow, which I know oh, wow. the drummer of said band produced the EP. So that's hence some nice uh, some nice uh, synergy there. And I'm probably going to butcher his, now, his name, but it's Callus. Have I got that right? Caius. Caius, there we go. Yeah. Caius, yeah. How how was it yeah. working with him and how's King Nun and that kind of relationship? How did that all form? Because I'm a big fan of them as guys as well. Yeah, I mean King Nun are great. Um so our drummer Matt lived in London for probably six or seven years at this point. He's just moved back mm-hmm. uh back here. But he he ran a studio in a really nice little kind of building that was a kind of like a charity community space, I guess. Yeah. Um with other musicians and artists and visual artists and people who made holographs and all sorts of stuff it was, it was a wild wild little spot um, but king nun actually had a had a space upstairs from matt yeah so matt knew those guys for a couple of years and then when we started the band together um just from heading up to london and, and kind of rehearsing there or recording we kind of got to know them and uh yeah caius is a crazy good engineer mm-hmm. producer drummer um songwriter so when we were looking for someone to help us out um we still wanted to kind of keep it in-house and, and do most of the bulk of the production work um with matt Mm. But we wanted someone else, and we knew that Caius would be great because he gets us. We got yeah. along with him, and he wasn't a total stranger. And yeah, it's been great. I mean, we're we're playing their album release show as well in September. So amazing. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, and their singer Theo is actually uh, is actually the the artist behind the Spider video, which ah, will amazing nice will will be out by the time this episode comes out for sure. But so- uh, yeah, it's, he's they're all crazy talented at what they do. Absolutely, awesome absolutely, and I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure who I'm speaking to from from Kingland yet. So, do you have any message you want to pass on? Which is going to be weird because that's going to be out before <laughs> this one. So, do you have any kind of messages from from beyond the future or beyond the past? I don't know how quite how that's going to work, but <laughs> if you if you speak to Caius, give him a hey yeah from me. A hey yeah, and, uh, nice. he'll know what it means. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love those guys; they're the best. Awesome. Really, really good band. Their, their new album is is going to be incredible. I, I can't wait. I got to send. Well, it'll be out. 
I got I got sent it yesterday, and I'm I'm yeah. To be honest, I am snowed under, which is never a bad thing. But I is one of there's one of my um, list of things of right. I've got to I've got to get this on and got to listen to this. That's um, if I don't get sent any more fucking albums because life yeah. is crazy. Um, and the yeah. other the other thing I realised as well when we last spoke, I would have still been living at my parents' house. So I've got my own place now, and I'm also getting married, and I have a cat, and yeah, fucking mad I, how life changes. I did see. C- congratulations on all that as well. It's uh, thanks. Mate. It feels it's, like yesterday. It's, it's crazy to see all this stuff happen in in two years i guess you know absolutely um and the best thing about having a guest on twice is the fact that so generally speaking pig behind the curtain everybody there's generally like a formula a structure that i kind of ride on that is kind of worked quite well for for the long period of time and having a second guest on and especially knowing you personally as well just being a, a super fun guy super up for it I kind of fucked with the formula a little bit. I hope you don't mind. So we're going to get to we're, we're, we're going to get to that in a minute. But um, yeah. So I kind of wanted to ask: Did you uh, approach the creative process for this EP differently in comparison to the last one? Because although um, when you released the last uh, EP, the kind of the world had kind of was in that kind of weird coming out of COVID stage, I guess, and it was kind of like the world wasn't quite sure, but it was getting back to normal. Obviously, now we're in a world where things are a lot more quote-unquote back to normal how did you approach it and did that affect you at all yeah i think it definitely affected it i mean that the first ep was recorded over so many different sessions mm. um written over so many different kind of months and like some of those songs are from 2018 you know yeah um and it was a lot of me kind of starting off in my bedroom with the song taking it to the guys and then kind of letting them have their flair and, and their input from there um but i think this process was a lot more creative um mm. for everybody and a lot more kind of collaborative because the the kind of the the basis of the songs were always the same. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time it was still me starting with the guitar, but I'd be, there'd, there'd be a lot more opportunity to get input from the other guys. And, and I feel like we all wrote this as much more of a collective and it's, there's so much more of our individual personalities on this, on this EP, which is exactly what I wanted. So like, I never wanted it to be a solo project in the first place. That's why I asked yeah. these guys to start the band, you know? Absolutely. And, um, and they're both so talented that it was really nice to kind of, to get that gelling of the three of us and, and really kind of, get it get it away get it across in a way we we were happy with and proud of you know absolutely and that's the thing as well like music and art is such a personal thing right and i think it's really important to when you release something into the world you're putting something good you know and i mean that not um as in subjectively good potentially because people have their own ears and their own eyes and they can make their own judgments but when you've created something from a place of yourself you've gone i intend for this to be a good thing right if people receive it or perceive it in that way that's fantastic but kind of one thing i, I noticed um for me personally the podcast was i kind of got a little bit of like quote unquote hate right and that's just that's kind of testament to the fact it's growing have you kind yeah. of had that how do you kind of deal with that how do you combat that if you if you kind of do have that at all with sleep outside uh i mean come to think of it i don't think we've had we've had any hate too much yet i mm. mean we had a couple of guys on reddit but i mean that's reddit oh, yeah, fuck reddit <laughs> That happens. Um, we, try, we were trying to ask for some help in in getting across to Canada because mm. we've never toured internationally before. Yeah. Some guys thought we were being pretty stupid, but we got there and yeah. um, we made it, so we win. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we luckily we haven't had any of that. Um, I mean, I'm sure there will be people who maybe don't like this EP as much as the last EP, or maybe just hate us altogether, and that's fine. I mean, like, I think we're all in a, in a place where we're really comfortable with what we're releasing. Um, yeah. And we're such good friends. We get along with each other that we actually don't care. I mean, yeah. it would be great for this EP to blow up and, you know, we'd be the biggest band on the planet. But, like, whatever happens, I, I don't care because we're so proud of it. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's water off a duck's back. And uh, and that's coming from someone who takes everything else in life so personally. And I just couldn't care. Yeah, Could absolutely. Care. That, I think that's the best way as well because, like you say, you, you've released something positive into the world, you know, and if people take it negatively, that that's their problem basically. So that makes that yeah. makes perfect sense. Um, so obviously for for me personally, you, you may disagree, but Sleep Outside has always kind of been a band who wear their heart on their sleeve or metaphorical sleeve in that respect. Can we expect more of the same kind of vibes with the new EP? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of the the lyrical content, um, it's it's a lot more personal for a start. Mm. Um, it's probably the most honest I've been in any sense of my life Um, people who know me know that I don't really take a lot seriously I'm a bit of a joker (laughs) and I just quote the office and you know like that's that's pretty much my life but yeah it's it's, it was kind of weird to to deal with that at first and and kind of put some things out there that maybe I hadn't talked about before or maybe I hadn't even spoke to the boys about before Um, so yeah it's definitely it's definitely earnest it's definitely honest Um, 
and that is a little bit nerve wracking. But I mean, I don't care. Like it's, yeah. it's it's a nice relief, you know. It's 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 the reason we do it. Um, and I hope people can resonate with that too, because there's no ego, there's no front. Everything is a uh, is exactly as it says on the tin. Like I wrote a song about a nightmare I had. Like that nightmare was word for word exactly what happened. And yeah, can't get more personal than that, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And something that I kind of wanted to touch on and allude to was obviously I spoke a, a moment ago about fucking the formula, right? Now, I don't know, my first question, right, this isn't like a band question, how would you feel about AI? Do you feel oh, like man, we're, we're all going to fucking sub- be slave to the AI and this whole thing? Because basically, I've asked AI to come up with 10 random questions, and I promise you, I just literally copied and pasted them, put them in my notes, and I've not read them. So I'm going to pick a couple out. But first and foremost, how do you feel about AI as a, as a concept? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a sick concept for you. Um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I guess you get to have a little bit of variation each time, so yeah, 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 I absolutely. respect that. Um, it's funny you talk about that, actually. I listened to an episode yesterday of a podcast with Will I Am from the mm-hmm. Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, for sure. Um, which might seem a bit outrageous, but me and Ollie loved the Black Eyed Peas growing up. Hey, um, they've got some bangers. Like, <laughs> like production-wise and like in terms of vision, visionary, and like Will I Am is, is a genius, a crazy guy. Yeah. Anyway, he's just invented some app, um, kind of like like a mix between Dropbox, Facebook, Instagram, Google Calendar. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, the vibe is to get everything in one place. But he was going crazy about AI and how AI has kind of helped him get there. And there was a really interesting kind of conversation around um, people being scared of AI and why they're scared of AI. And um, ultimately, the, the reason people are scared of AI is because of humanity and what humanity could train AI to do as opposed to what AI could learn to do. Yeah, that's true. Um, and that's been on my mind all day long. Mm. And it's crazy that you've brought this up now because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, some, that's some synergy. Absolutely. Um, so the first the first of these AI questions, I'll, I'll, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll let you, so I've got 10 questions. Again, I've not read them. You pick a number between one and 10. Cool, man, I'll go seven. Seven. Uh, if you could choose to any fictional uh, fictional world to live in, what fictional world would you pick and why? Ooh, that's a great question. Well, AI, I mean, AI I wrote it. I can't claim that one. Uh, well, well done, <laughs> Chat GPT, and, yeah, and whoever created that one. Congrats. Um, it's got to be Harry Potter. Any, it's got to yeah. be Harry Potter. I'm not even the biggest Harry Potter fan these days, but growing up as a kid, it's the most like magical, enchanting thing you could possibly be a part of. And like doing spells and going to Hogwarts, like that, that's a crazy life to live. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, wherever Hogwarts is, yeah. I want to be there. Nice, nice. I was going to say, it's just, it's just a bit of a shame that JK's become a bit of a piece of shit, but alas, yeah. you know, yeah. alas, we move forward. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one to defend, isn't it? I yeah. mean, not that, not that you should be defending anyone no. for, for being a, a terrible person, but yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty bad, pretty hard. Awesome. Uh, one to ten, excluding seven. We got three. Three. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Oh, me and the boys are having this conversation recently. It has to be Japan, I think. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of how much far, further ahead they are with technology and just their kind of standard of living for the most part, um, has to be Japan. I think if I'm going to travel anywhere, it has to be crazy different to where I am currently, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think Japan's definitely up there. And the food, like the culture, the cleanliness, everything just looks insane. So. I was going to say, I, I've chatted to a, a few bands who've, who've been out to Japan and they've all said Japan is just the most futuristic place imaginable, but also the shows are like fucking so sick. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was chatting to um, Nigel from on- Onslaught, obviously Onslaught being an 80s thrash metal band for those who don't know, and he was saying that they were on a bill, a mixed bill between them and the Backstreet Boys. And then <laughs> you, you can imagine like this sort of... Uh, an 80s kind of thrash band going on and apparently girls were screaming like it was like a Bieber concert or whatever and yeah it sort of blew his mind which I fucking love to be fair that's um, crazy yeah they, they seem so receptive to everything I think mm-hmm. that's that's the big thing like whatever it is they just like people in Japan just think it's cool absolutely um, especially if it's international as well because I guess they're so far away from a lot of the world or at least like where we are um that they they just embrace it when it comes and that's that's what bothers me so much when you see kind of international bands come to the uk and people don't bother traveling like an hour to go to a show and you think yeah. like you know you know what you don't that, realize how lucky you are that is literally one of the my biggest fucking and again i don't try, i don't try not i try not to look at like social media too much because it's just a cesspit 
but you'll see like a band do an announcement and I'm talking like you, you've seen the posters when they're doing like you know the A markets the B markets and a little bit of the C market I don't know it's like a 14 okay so the obituary tour that's literally just come around the UK Trivium as well done like a 13 14 run show in the UK and people are still going why aren't, why aren't you playing my front garden and it's like fucking hell like we no matter where you are in the UK you can get to the other side tip top whatever bottom in eight hours like it's yeah, the max. country is not that big like and you look at america and you know the all like across europe and things and people fly and travel and you know six seven hours for a, a u.s uh u.s a citizen to get to a show is literally nothing like they can just be driving across the desert and they just do that shit but yeah, yeah man, it's, it's, it's like we're, we're doing 11 days mm-hmm. in november well when this episode comes out we'll be on yeah. tour yeah um and even that we were like running out of places to play you know yeah, like well, of course the uk is yeah, only yeah. so big yeah, and that's the thing. I, I guess there's a, there is a, a huge amount of respect for that because, like you say, the UK is so small and it, I, I completely understand bands who will go, we're going to go to Manchester, London, Birmingham, uh, maybe Cardiff, and then uh, somewhere in Scotland, like um, Glasgow and Scotland, right? That makes perfect logical sense because, you know, geographically, the amount of like, because again, Spotify, things like that, you can see where your big pools of fans are. You're not going to go to somewhere like Hull or uh, Swansea or insert random town here if there's not the demand. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, sure, to, sure. to kind of go to like, right, we're going to book everything and hope for the best is a really good strategy to kind of gain new fans. But also it's kind of like, you could potentially not play to no one. Do you know what I mean? It's such a knife edge thing. How do you kind of go about uh, booking your tours and things? Because it's through um, Avocado. Have I got that right? Avocado booking? Not not anymore, actually. We oh, were okay, with fine. Avocado for a bit. Yeah. Um, which was crazy. I mean, for a start, they're obviously yeah. an amazing agency. Uh, Matthew from Funeral for a Friend was our agent. And mm-hmm. I grew up with posters of him on my bedroom wall. Like yeah, being Welsh sure. mm-hmm, and course. working with Matthew was a dream. Um, but that aside, we do everything ourselves. Now it's all in-house oh, amazing. again. It's all, yeah, nice. all me. Yeah. Uh, for the most part um, I just spend kind of every ounce of free time I've got on my laptop yeah. contacting promoters and trying to arrange things and whatnot. Um, and it is tricky like I, I try not to look too much at the Spotify kind of locations and mm. like where you're bigger or smaller or whatever because personally it drives me crazy like when we first released the EP I spent every day on that app like refreshing yeah. looking at where we were big looking at oh okay so maybe next time we need to target this city or this mm. city and it's it drove me crazy. Um, so I've given up on that and I just want to play to as many new people as I can. Yeah. Whether that be to 10 people that we've never met before or 100 people that know us. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd choose those 10 new people every day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that was kind of the thought process. Yeah, I mean, we're doing um, the longest tour we've ever done for a start yeah. and it's 12, 12 days, 11 shows. Amazing. Um, so that's going to be a challenge um, to say the least. But yeah, we just want to hit new places that we haven't been before. I think that's the that's the main objective you know it's all well and good us playing cardiff and london mm-hmm. once a week or once a month but yeah. it's not going to get us anywhere you know i want to i want to meet new people i want to have new experiences i want to see new places so absolutely and that that's something again I, i'm not massively au fait with um the band who i'm going to speak about now but back in the day like so ask alexandria right when they f- obviously they're they're a uk based band when they first broke they just went straight to america which you know looking at it gone well that doesn't make sense but that was the thing. Conquer the big apple first, or not the literal apple, but you know what I mean. Conquer the big place first, and then work backwards. So it does kind of make sense because, like you say, you can get into the hometown syndrome of playing the local venue and then going a hundred miles. But then I've seen I've seen it in Norwich, right? We've got a very good local scene, but I've seen it where people have gone right. Cool, we're gonna we're gonna go down to London. But everyone who's in the London shows are people who've just come from Norwich. And it's like, mm. what? Not don't support that band by going to London, but you could just see them in Norwich in like two weeks. Like, it's not. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't bode itself that well, if if that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's really hard, isn't it? Because you know, when you're a new band starting off, you want to play shows. That's yeah, like why we do. all do it is to yeah, play yeah, shows. Yeah. Um, and I hate to think of it as too much of a business because mm. I mean that's not why anyone you don't pick up no. a guitar because you want to be a millionaire or you don't play a drum kit because you want to be a millionaire. You just yeah. pick it up because you enjoy it. Um, but it is hard to kind of find that balance between keeping yourself happy and creatively fulfilled um, yeah. and also expanding and growing because I, I think there's like a weird taboo at least in in the kind of alt-rock emo sort of scene where it's almost kind of shamed if you want to 
grow and, and be mm. a bigger band and, you know, like tour different places. And, and people often think you're a bit crazy for wanting to do that. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, as long as you're being creatively fulfilled and you're still getting to play to these new people, then, then that's important. Um, so that's, that's our whole motto is just find every person in the world and, and make them listen eventually, you know? Absolutely. And that, that's something that, um, so I had, um, Matt Stocks of Life in the Stocks podcast on here, uh, a couple of weeks back. And he, he said to me something that just really, cause again, I was kind of a bit like yourself when it comes to Spotify, just obsessing over the numbers. And it was like, he literally said to me, like, I haven't looked at my numbers in like two years. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I just don't care. He's like, I do it because I love doing it. And that's the end of it. Like if people want to listen, that's cool. If people don't want to listen, I'm still going to do it. And I get that obviously he's in more of a, uh, quote unquote privileged position but you know having a platform and being uh, in the industry for such a long time but also it's kind of like well that's fucking mad I w- but now i only go on to the spotify platform whatever to upload podcasts and that's literally it like because that's the thing and i went on it the other day and i was like oh like and i kind of got that kind of nice little adrenaline kick that you hope you get when you check in yeah. but it's kind of like oh that's oh, that's gone up or, or whatever do you know what i mean so it's so important just to kind of cap cap that off. I guess it's uh yeah, it's it's, it's like any social media, isn't it? It's mm. like posting a photo on Instagram and getting those likes. It's it, yeah. it's a serotonin boost for mm. anybody. Like whether you like it or not, that's the way the world is. Um, and I don't think there's any shame in in kind of wanting that validation, but I yeah. don't think people should need it. You know, no, absolutely. Um, at, at least not people in creative fields like ourselves. Like you do this because you love it, and that's all that matters. And yeah. you know, you'll find that a lot of the a lot of the people that do grow are people like yourself who do it because they love it and they don't care about the numbers and yeah and that that kind of they kind of go weirdly hand in hand you know the less yeah. you care the, the more you get which is well that that's the, the thing yeah, that's the thing it's caring about the right thing i'm i'm yeah. in in life generally i'm a very very relaxed human being right as there's very little halt there's very little hills that i will die on but when you find that hill like god help you do you know what i mean (laughs) so like i'll just sit there and i'll get like in my own head about like podcast stuff and i'm like oh but like and i'll again we talk about like hate comments like i'll get a shitty comment and i'm like oh but it's free like it's literally if you don't it's boost it's boosting your algorithm yeah it's just like (laughs) it's it's fine yeah absolutely um i wanted to talk about the canada shows because you know what I fucking love? And we talked a little bit negatively about social media. What I love is having people like yourself and just seeing people who I genuinely uh, like and respect and things do well. And it's just such a really... Because in the same way you can get, uh, quote-unquote, like secondhand anger, like where you get angry on behalf of someone else, I get joy on behalf of other people. When I see other people absolutely smashing it, I'm like, fucking go on, lad. How how did that kind of that come about, and how how were those shows, and how was that all experience? It was it was pretty crazy to be honest. It still feels a little bit like a dream, you know. Mm. It's, it's one of those things we we wanted to do forever yeah. um, in all of our bands. Um, we got offered to play North by Northeast Festival, which is um, yeah kind amazing. of similar to South by in, in Texas. Mm-hmm. I think they're some way related. I'm not entirely sure to be honest. Yeah, um, and I honestly don't even know how we got offered that. I don't remember <laughs> if we applied for it if someone applied on our behalf, if yeah. they just found us or what. But I, I woke up one day to an email um, basically inviting us to come to Canada. Nice. And we were like, yep, let's do it. No questions yeah. asked, let's yeah. do it. Um, and then we wanted to play some more shows, so we just got in touch with some people. There's um, there's an awesome band in a uh, town called Guelph called Excuse Me. They're mm-hmm. a great Canadian band. They messaged us in probably around November of 2021 when we spoke, um, yeah. saying they were fans of the band. And if we ever came to Canada, they'd love to play a show. Mm-hmm. So the first thing we did was message those guys and we're like, hey, <laughs> two years later, we're coming over. Um, so they booked us a show in their hometown, Guelph, which was yeah. honestly the, probably the craziest show we ever played. It was Amazing. it was so surreal, you know, like packed out venue so far from home in a little kind of university town, not even in Toronto, just yeah. kind of like tucked away on the side, you know? Nice. Yeah, it was, it was a dream, man. It was like the best trip ever. I mean, I'm still in a crazy amount of debt because of it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a financially viable trip for us, but I mean, we, we had the opportunity and we were like, we have to go. Like, yeah, we might never get that chance again. I mean, I'd love to think we will, but you know, we, we just grabbed it with both hands and, uh, yeah, still feels a little bit like a dream. It's kind of still the blues kind of haven't worn off yet. But. Absolutely. And that, that's the thing as well. It, it is like, we, we spoke a little bit about the fact that bands take their music like a business, because I think to a degree you kind of have to, 
or otherwise you know you have the potential to run yourself into the ground both you know financially uh metaphorically kind of emotionally physically whatever but also like i am a and this kind of this does upset a few people a few of my close friends and family life is kind of a living and we're all gonna die so you're dead in the long the long kind of term thing it doesn't matter like do you know what i mean i would much rather book the plane ticket go and do that show and then come back and go oh fuck now i've got to figure this out you know what I mean? that's uh, exactly what i've been doing for the last three months mate <laughs> but yeah it's, it's like i'd rather be like it's, this is the, the cringiest thing you could ever say but it's like mm. creative prosperity and financial bankruptcy isn't it like yeah absolutely uh, that's important i think um obviously you know you need to meet your basic needs but like mm-hmm. just just have a good time and i i went to a country on the other side of the world with my two best friends like yeah. what more could i want you know yeah. absolutely and, and you know what though that's the other thing people, people will go to you know canada go across the world for holidays right and they won't blink two eyelids about it what's the difference with you taking the band out there do you know what i mean that, exactly that, right. that's the way you've got to look at it it was a it was a holiday cross with a job <laughs> yeah it, and that's the thing like that's crazy to think about isn't it like mm-hmm we we got to do that we got invited over because of the music we made yeah. um and i think that's something that um you see a lot of ba- bigger bands now kind of take for granted a little bit mm-hmm. and it blows my mind absolutely blows my mind how anyone could uh, could ever get bored of that because yeah. i'm chomping at the bit to get back over there so. absolutely absolutely i mean i uh, say so i'm getting i'm getting married uh in 10 months so july next year and we're going uh, on a honeymoon abroad and everything and i've not been abroad since march 2020 right and i am Damn. fucking chomping like i hate Mate, flying i hate the hate the whole experience of flying hate all that bullshit but oh just get me on a fucking airplane get me to a sunny beach lovely stuff um, you know, you'll enjoy it <laughs> i hope so as if she turns up which i do wind her up a lot um i've got <laughs> a, we'll, we'll take another ai question just real quick so you've got one two four five six uh eight nine or ten left let's go ten let's go ten Let's see, how, uh, see how much worse they get over time of uh, <laughs> Chat GPT running out of questions. What is one goal or dream that you have for the future, and what steps are you taking to achieve it? Fuck, that's deep. I love that. Bloody hell! <laughs> I wasn't ready for this today. It's a Monday. Uh, oh man, what what's like the one dream? I mean, the dream for us is to, um, as much as I've said, it's not about business. Is to make mm-hmm. this a full time career. Yeah, um, of course. Whether that means paying rent and struggling and getting just getting by then cool um yeah. you know however that looks i don't really care um i think the the dream would just be to make that a reality and and you know finally release an album and and get to play these bigger venues and, and tour across the world i think just all of that wrapped, wrapped up into one is such a cliche answer and it's so obvious as well because yeah. you know that's, when you're a kid fair. playing guitar in your bedroom you, you dream about playing download festival or, or whatever it is um so yeah, I think I think that whole package. I mean, in terms of kind of shorter term goals, we want to do festivals. I, you know, I want to play two thousand trees. I want to play slam dunk. I want to do Reading. I want to do download. I want to do primavera. You know, like yeah. all these things that um, that feel so far away. But um, I think you know, with with the right work, that they're, they're not they're not unattainable for us. And uh, that might sound arrogant, but no, absolutely you know, not. I think that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Is just taking it one step at a time and, and trying to take over the world, whether that takes us a year or. 20 i don't care yeah i mean to be fair i, I went to uh, just to pick out 2000 trees because 2000 trees is great i went last year uh or sorry this year should i say it's just this year just gone and it was fucking outstanding and i'd love to see you guys there either either on one of the tent stages because you know getting a tent getting the sound reverberating around or they've got the forest stage which would Man, be the forest so, is so sick. good so, so, so me and ollie me and ollie went this year as well and uh, oh, amazing. that nice. forest stage was was crazy i mean like seeing Owen, like Mike Kinsella from American football, just playing yeah. like yeah. six foot in front of me, surrounded by trees is just, yeah, yeah it's beautiful. It's so that, that's, that's the kind of the short term dream, I guess. Absolutely. And you know what, right? So since you got, since you are coming back on, I have asked this question to everyone in 2023 and I wouldn't have got the opportunity to ask you here back in 2021. And so I'm, you got to kind of bear with me. And if you list, you've listened to the show, as you say, you're kind of going to know where I'm going with this, right? So, new listeners of the show, 
we have a we have a game we play, right? So when Spotify buys this podcast and make loads of lovely Spotify money, Spotify exclusive and all the rest of it, or actually, you know what, Apple, if you want to buy it, or Deezer, I'm not fucking picky, whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? No prejudice. No prejudice on that. It's just because uh, Spotify exclusive is normally the one they go with. But anyway, um, I'm going to have loads of money, right? Because Spotify is paying me, right? So I'm going to create my own festival. And in said festival, we're going to have it in the biggest field that we can f- like fathom, Right. Whatever money can buy, we'll get in the biggest field. And all the bands are invited to play, including you guys, of course. And what I would like to know is what you'd like to add to the rider of said festival. Now, I'll give you a couple of uh, hints, as I'm sure you will have heard. Uh, Andy from Therapy, the lovely Andy, said, I basically just want like, socks, pants, clean water, fruit, all that stuff. Easy. All the way up to we've had like people who want like saunas and like fucking roller coaster rides <laughs> and all this crazy, crazy stuff. Firstly, where do you kind of sit in that kind of scale and what would you like to have? I mean, we're not in a position to be demanding any kind of crazy rider. Um, I mean, you are at this festival. Fruit, <laughs> fruit and veg, yeah. um, bottled, bottles of water and bottles of Huel for breakfast the next nice. day. That is it. Yeah, um, sure. So part of me wants to stay kind of sensible uh, and stay humble and grounded. Fuck but, that noise. Fuck that noise. But that, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um I mean, first of all, accommodation has to be top tier. I'm yep. not sleeping on the floor. I'm not sleeping sure. on an airbed. Yeah, for sure. Um, Five star hotel, preferably a balcony, jacuzzi, perhaps. Nice. I'll take yeah. I take it or leave the jacuzzi, but balcony is a must, um, and the free bar is is a must. Um, yeah. If you want to get onto free bar, Patron XO coffee, coffee tequila. Nice. Um, rest in peace. Yeah. Sadly, no longer with us. Um, and fresh kegs of Dea Steady Rolling Man. It's the best beer of all time. Nice. Nice. Um, and yeah, I think in terms of luxuries and amenities, man, I, I could go on forever, couldn't I? Like, I'll take a car. I'll take a chiropractor. Um, yeah. My back is is pretty pretty mashed up at the moment. Ollie is like my in house chiropractor. Before every show, he kind of cracks me up. So I'll take like a a, a doctor, a chiropractor to the stars. Mm. He can be kind of just like chilling in the corner for whenever I need. For, for, um, some, for some reason, I don't know why. I, for every time I load my Instagram up recently, I keep seeing this meme about uh, like POV, a chiropractor, and it's just builders <laughs> just cracking doors. And I don't know where this has started from, but every time I load my TikTok, I'm like, oh, I've been searching chiropractor. Maybe it's the Instagram algorithm telling me that I'm past the age of thirty and I probably shouldn't need to go to chiropractor. Mate, that is my entire Instagram feed at the moment. I, I just can't stop laughing because this is exactly how I feel when I've been to a chiropractor. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a sign of the times. But, you know, maybe we're all getting old. But yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. I mean, in terms of like amenities, like you feel on forever. I mean, like a five-a-side football pitch would be yeah, nice. Maybe nice. like a an interband tournament. I'm pretty competitive. I say that I've not had that one yet. So we that that is something new. We could definitely do that. Yeah, I think I think some kind of like band Olympics yeah. um, would be nice. All all fun and games, you know. But mm-hmm. I am very competitive, and I love sport. I was gonna say, if you if we're playing football specifically, what what is what role are you playing in football? Uh, probably, I don't know, man. I haven't got the legs these days, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll be a defender. I'll be I'll be defender. crunching people at the back. Hopefully, nice. big big shouter, big leader. Nice, if you will. We like that. Um, yeah, some kind of some kind of band Olympics, I think, is a must. Um, I'd like to get Lakes, and I feel fine involved for that as well because nice. we did our first tour with them, and we had a crazy. Uh, well, they had a crazy table tennis tournament um, that we were too drunk to be a part of. So I'd like to kind of revitalize that a little bit if we could and, yeah. uh, and get those guys involved. I love that. You know what? I, I just It just kind of occurred to me. I think that there's a gap in the market for Festival Olympics. I think that'd be cool, man. Like, just like a main arena getting like, I don't know, fucking, like, let's take like, the download lineup, right? Getting like Lars Ulrich versus like... Um, uh, oh, I forgot my name was uh, Izzy from Izzy no Lizzie from Hailstorm like fucking Javelin or something do you know what I mean yeah. that, that'd be so it'd be, sick, it'd be like. insane <laughs> like, can, you, can you imagine like a, a Dave Mustaine and uh, James Hetfield boxing match you know like on the main stage in the ring that'd in the octagon so yeah. if you will that'd be so like, good it'd be crazy like, there's a few few health and safety hoops to uh, to jump through oh uh, yeah. yeah but you know they they've 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 done so many uh, allegedly so many things to their body over the years. I don't think they're gonna they they're not gonna worry about a, a quick kickbox to the face or something. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, man, that that would be it though. But yeah, I mean, good food is a must. Yeah, good good drinks and uh, the ability to have all my friends around as uh, as lame as that may sound. No, absolutely. Um, not. 
I think the worst part sometimes with us about playing hometown shows is we have so many friends come and see us that we can't really speak to because we're too busy to do anything. Yeah. That's um, fair. So yeah, give me a festival slot at like 12, 12 a.m. Uh, sorry. Yeah. 12 p.m. Midday. 12 p.m. Yeah, First yeah, yeah. band on. Nice. I'll play and I'll just enjoy the rest yeah. of the day. Nice. No stress. Nothing to worry about. We got crew loading our gear off, which has never ever happened. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be sipping my coffee tequila and my beer, and uh, playing some football and just hanging out. Lovely job, lovely job. Um, so yeah, the EP will be out when this comes out. What is the name of the EP? We haven't even discussed the name of the EP yet. I was gonna say, I've really... yeah, I know. I've done a terrible job at promoting the band, <laughs> and I've just talked about how much I like sport and it's all good <laughs> traveling. Uh, yeah, the EP is called Lakes in Which to Drown In. Uh, nice. It comes out on November the first, which I believe will be two days. Something prior like to this episode yeah something, something like, like, that. like that yeah 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 um yeah it's really good i think mm. uh i hope everyone else agrees if they don't fine tell me about it comment yeah. on my instagram posts and give us a boost <laughs> so other people see it i say don't fuck or well, if you do do that i'll be fucking coming after i'm gonna oi you fucking cunt why don't you next i kind of want it man. I, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> like a i'm quite a highly strong person like, I, i'm quite i'm a bit of a joker but i also love a bit of an argument mm-hmm. so For i kind of sure. i kind of want it like I, i'd quite enjoy a little bit of a little bit of beef i think <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, yeah. The, the EP comes out on the 1st of November. Um, it's the most personal thing I've ever written, I think. Um, encapsulates kind of everything we did before. Um, the production has gotten better. Matt, our drummer, and, and obviously Kaius from King Nun have just smashed the production out of the park. Yeah. Ollie's bass playing and singing on it is just crazy. Like There's so many harmonies that we never thought we'd achieve. And everything just feels kind of like a, a massive step up from what we've done before um and that's that's all we can ask for isn't it like whether people get it or they don't that's fine but i think we all feel so proud of this and yeah. and so kind of th- this is the hill that we all die on like this yeah. ep is, is is kind of all we want to talk about and yeah we're super proud of it and hope people like it it's it's a bit heavy it's a bit sad it's a bit mathy it's and it's fun it nice. doesn't take itself too seriously lovely job and obviously the the tour you'll be on tour when this goes out Yes, we will. Yeah, we'll be nice. in Southampton, I believe. Oh, amazing. The nice. Heartbreakers. Nice, nice. Um, so I have a question because I don't know the answers. Are you coming anywhere near the East Coast? Are you coming anywhere near Norwich, that kind of way? We are playing in Norwich for the first time. Fucking get in. You'll see me at, at the bar, son. <laughs> a, at a venue I can't pronounce called the Louis Mar... Louis. The Crypt of... The... It's called The Crypt at the Louis Marchese. Or Louis Marchese. Crypt. Hang on a minute. This is live. I believe. Crypt, Norwich. You need you need someone to like pull it up for you. You need a. I do. Uh, yeah. The crypt. Okay, the crypt. Bedford. Okay, I know where that is. That is near. The, oh, this is very Norwich centric. It's in Tombland, near near the cathedral. I can't say I've been, but I I know roughly where we're where we're talking. So nice. I cool. mean, we've we've never been to Norwich. We. <gasps> We have a lot of people asking us to play Norwich, weirdly. Yeah. I don't know if... I mean, I don't... I don't. Besides yourself and Chris Childs, who everyone in UK emo knows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're the only guys I know from Norwich. Um, yeah. But apparently a lot of people in Norwich are into into the band, so yeah. we, nice. we thought we'll try and, try and head there. Absolutely. Well, as I say, I've said... I haven't said this very often, right? I, ha- I used to, but I will be definitely buying you a beer because I definitely owe you a beer. Because you know, twice on twice on appearance, twice fucking twi- lightning strikes twice, all of that jazz. <laughs> um, I'm definitely gonna try and make it down, and we'll have a few bevs, and it'll be great, great. Yeah, fun. man, it's it's the last day of the tour as well, so I oh, even better. Than perfect. I mean, we like I said earlier, we don't we're so sensible on tour. We don't drink at all. We don't party. We like. We, we are the most boring band. For, for audio ever. listeners, I gave him the boo and the, the, the finger. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like. But for three guys who like going out and mm. kind of partying a little bit, we are the most boring band ever on tour until yeah. we have a we have a chance not to be. Yeah, for and sure. And then we'll then we'll let loose. So yeah, y- yeah, you'll find us at a good time, I think. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Is there anything else that we've missed? Anything we need to catch up on? Well, I mean, not as far as I'm aware. I mean, keep doing what you're doing. This Thanks, podcast mate. is great. It's growing. Um, check out the new EP if you haven't already. Um, I'm trying to think of any bands I can shout out. I mean, there's <laughs> literally hundreds of bands that, that I love at the moment. There's Lakes, there's I Feel Fine, there's The Jumper Boy, Pillow Fort, Super Friends, King Nun, uh, Show Dogs, nice. Amazing Cardiff Band. I mean, there's there's literally hundreds. I could go on forever. Um, but yeah, just keep supporting smaller bands and going to shows and 
Awesome stuff. Being friends. All righty. So what we're going to do is we're going to end on another AI question and then we'll, we'll, bow, we'll bow out of here, right? So let's, just, let's go. Let's so go. I've got, I've got, you've got one to eight. Let's go number one. Number one. This should, in theory, this should be the big one, shouldn't it? So. Oh well, yeah, exactly. If you could have a conversation with any historical figure, who would it be and why? Jeez, I mean, not much of a history buff, if I'm honest. This is going to be a tough one. I think all of my answers would be like previous sportsmen, or you know, like you, you can have sport. They're, they're history be, people. Like, people that probably aren't worth digging up from the grave, sorted. <laughs> <laughs> to tough. be honest. Uh, oh man, famous people from history. Man, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't give you an answer, honestly. Fair, um, fair. It'll come back to me. I'm sure I will. By this time this episode comes out in November, yeah. I'll have thought of somebody. And when, and, uh, and when you do, I'll, when you do, message me it, and I'll put it in the intro and be like, "This is going to make no sense to anyone while I do the intro." But Adam says, and then just say the name, and then just we'll go into it. <laughs> I'll, I'll send I'll send you a voice memo, and you can kind yes. of like seamlessly cut it in. Lovely job, lovely job. Well, good luck with the EP release, sir. I shall see you uh, hopefully at the Norwich show, and um, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. The fucking band is smashing it, and uh, it's been a pleasure to have you on once again. Thanks so much, Matt. It's good to see you again. Awesome, mate. Right, speak soon, everybody. Peace and love.